The believers cry out. That's why we as believers need to cry out for God. You can Amen. protest all you want. March every city, every state, every country. But we need prayer back in this nation. We need Amen. God back in this nation. We need prayer back in the schools. We need it in the churches. We need it at homes. We need it in our marriages. We need God back. We need his presence back in our society. Are you hearing me today? Amen. Are you Amen. hearing me? So here it is now. They will do everything. Just like Martin Luther. Martin Luther said, change is coming. He said in his speech, that was years ago, over 50 years ago. He said, I will. I have a dream. that I, He said, I saw white boys and little girls holding hands together, walking. Come on, somebody. And there are brothers and sisters. Look at what is happening now. The Bible is fulfilling. Everything is coming forth. Prophecy is being fulfilling. Are you hearing me? I looked on the news. If you watch the news, I've never seen so many unity people from all over the world. You have every country marching because of what is going on. Injustice. People are not looking at your skin color anymore. Now they're looking for injustice. My God, the God that you serve, he is a God of people. He loves people, the needy. He goes out of his way to help the poor. My God, always helping each other. He said to love each other. And I saw that even on the news. My God is up to something. I'm telling you, change is coming. You better prepare yourself. I already told you that we were in the wilderness. The wilderness was doing what? Preparing us for what is to come. Are you hearing me? While they were in seclusion, while they were in, what do you call it, pandemic, they could not go anywhere. No rich, no poor, no blind, the dumb, no one could go anywhere. Churches are closed. Everything was shut down. God says, I'm preparing you because there is a great change. Hallelujah, somebody. Come on, you got to hear me today. I'm going to preach this thing for you. I'm going to preach this. I know it's not perfect English. I'm going to preach it for you today, all right? Hear me now. And after everything, when the change comes, the Bible says, change came. And those boys went, they died. But look, look, look what happened now. I'm, I'm going to just take it back a little further. I'm going back to Samuel chapter 1. You don't have to go there, but I'll just paraphrase it for you so I can go over you because of time. We don't have that time to read every scripture, but I'll, I'll explain it to you. So here it is in chapter 1. It's the same thing. Change must come. Change is here. And it goes on to say there was a man. His name is Alkanah. If you're not mistaken, Alkanah. His name means is to, what he, his name means is acquiring of God. You know that God, God, God has possessed him. You know what I'm saying? A man of God. The Bible said he was a faithful man. He was a God-fearing man. He he loved the Lord. He loved his family. He was a worshiper. He walked upright with God. That's who he was. But guess what? He had two wives. He had two wives, Hannah and Kinnah. We know both of them. But the Bible says that Hannah could not have any children. She was barren. And we know that in those days, it's a stigma against women who cannot bear children. So can you imagine? Peniah mocked Hannah every day. I got your man. You know what I'm saying? I got some children. You don't. They ridiculed her. Society ridiculed her. They look down upon her. They talk about her. Remember, Elkanah, he, he had everything. He was a rich man. He had, Hannah had everything. She could go shopping and buy all the fancy clothes she wants. She could get all the mules and cows and donkeys and, and all those linen and everything, all the scents, everything, silver and gold. She had it all. But one thing she so desired was to have a child. She yearns it. She wants a child so badly she could not yeah. have it. She even sinned. She talked to her husband. She begged him. Her husband looked at her and said, hey, 
What is it? Am I God? Can I give you kids? I'm not God. She tried everything. I can imagine she went to every doctor, but she could not have a child because her womb, she was barren. But the Bible tells me that when you're desperate, oh, help me, Jesus, and you're ready for a change, you're going to desperate more. Come on, somebody. It's time for a change. You said, I know. I've been living like this for a while. Pinaya, I heard you talking about about me, but that's okay. I'm going to get changes. Come on, somebody. I know what you said, but it's all right. You can talk about me. You can mock me. You can ridicule me, but I know a place where I can go. And the Bible says because her husband was a faithful man of God, Hannah knew that God answers prayer. Come on now. You must know that God answers prayer. You must have the faith to believe that when you pray, that it shall all oh, come on that when we pray, certain things don't happen because the Bible said you pray in the midst. But hear me now. When you pray and believe that a God, you say in your words, you promise me, God. And Hannah marched her way down. The Bible said, Hannah said, okay, time for a change. The first thing she did, she said, I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast for this thing right here. I need a child and I must. Get me a baby. Come on, somebody. And she Amen. started fasting. Fasting. Amen. And then she went on to the church house. And she knelt down. Anna was so angry and so bitter inside. She was in such distress that even when she started praying, the words could not come out of her mouth because she was in such agony. And they said that Elijah, the words could not, Eli, Eli, Eli now who was taking care of the priest, Eli heard, saw her, he could not hear her, so he marked her lips. He was watching her lips to see what she's saying. And he, sometimes people don't know what you're going through, but they always have something to say. Come on, somebody. They they don't know what you've been through, but they always want to judge you. They don't know the pain that you've been through. They don't know the nights when you have to kneel down and pray. They don't know the time when you're hungry and you have to go to bed hungry. They don't know when the time you wish to give your kids certain type of things, but you could not give it to them. But you know there's going to be a change. And the Bible says she started and Eli came over and rebuked her and said, Hey, Hannah, hey, what are you doing? Are you drunk? She said, no, I'm not. But then, guess what? He, she started telling her story. She started telling the man of God, say, let me tell you something. No, 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 I'm not drinking any wine. I am desperate. This is what happened to me. I'm in need. I'm in need of a child. And the Bible says, now that Eli understood. See, that's why you can't trust everyone. You can't tell everyone your business. Come on, are you hearing me now? Let them talk. Let them say whatever they want to say. Know who your God is because there's a time, it's coming, there's a time for change. Are you hearing me? Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. So here we go now. Here we go. I'm telling you the story. So he listen now. So after she started praying, he said, listen, all right, get up. It's okay. God said to tell you whatever is it your heart desires. He granted it unto you. Your request is granted. Oh my God, are you hearing me? Oh my God, the prophet told her that her prayer request is granted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't think you're really hearing me. Do, did you hear what I just said? He said, so here it is now. That's why I told you don't worry about it. If you know who God is and you keep praying, sometimes... It looks as if there are no changes coming. Sometimes yes. the situation, it gets worse before it starts picking up. It starts getting yes. worse. Come on, I told you before, it's going to, y'all, I told you months ago, this is going to get worse before it gets better. Come on, somebody, are yes. you hearing me? Hallelujah. And the Bible, if I'm not mistaken, the Bible said, let me tell you something. The Bible says she believed. Her faith was activated. See, she was in desperate mode. She had nowhere else to turn but to God. And after that, after she went home, guess what? She conceived. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us, I want you to come off your feet. 
spiritual birth control. Come on, get it up. Throw it out today. Get off your spiritual birth control. Come on now. And get pregnant for the Lord. Come on, somebody. Get pregnant for his word. Pregnant in the word of God. Walk around with your belly. Knowing who you are. It has an identity. The Father is Jesus Christ. Come on. A lot of pastors are preaching, but they don't even know who they're fit child is. I'm speaking Jamaican and English so you can hear me, but you know who's your baby father is. His name, his name is Jesus Christ. And the Bible said after she got pregnant, there was a change in her life completely. Completely. Guess what now? Not one time did Panaya ever provoke her again. Not one time. Because the change had what? Come. What else is she going to say? The change had a God answered her prayer. You hear me? So hold on. No matter what it is. Remember the word Anna. Panaya means pearl. Pearl. Pearls. Panaya means pearl. Hannah yes. means gracious. Hannah means gracious. God is gracious to her. Yes. But you know, pearl is something that is so unique. It's beautiful. It's elegant. Right? But there's a process. Amen. You see, pearl, how it forms. See, what happened is that it forms in the body of an oyster. Right? You know how it's created, right? And it irritates. So it irritates it every time. It irritates it. Then it irritates it until it's becoming. And it starts forming. And starts forming. And becomes a pearl. The jewel. The pearl and the oyster. So it irritates that it irritates everything out of them until finally it forms. It's become great value. Now it's very expensive. Great value. You see, Hannah could not have done it if there was no Pinaya. There would be no Samuel if there was no Pinaya in Hannah's life. Come on, somebody. You hearing me? You could not do that because God had grace upon her. God had mercy upon her. Are you hearing me today? And because of that, guess what? What? Who in what is your Pinaya? What is it? What is it that's holding you back? What is it that you are afraid of? What is it that's mocking you? What is it that's laughing at you and mocking you and jeering you? I said, you pray every day for years, but we don't see any changes. I, I know I'm preaching today. If you don't want to hear it, I'll receive it. You've been talking to God for years. I don't see anything happen. What's going on? But baby, I come to tell you, hold on. Don't give up changes. Come Ah, are you feeling me today? I said change is coming. It's not where you want it, but God is always on time. Remember years ago that prayed and that march, but 50 after 50 years, change started coming. Are you hearing me? Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. So here is it now. This is it for you. I'm asking you today. You know, sometimes you have a supervisor. I don't know. It happened to me. You have a supervisor, and for no reason, they just always attacking you. You don't do anything. You come in, you do your job, you mind your business, but for some strange reason, everything you do is a problem. See, that's a penile, right? So that's it. But God is setting you up. Come on, somebody. Because guess Amen. what? Before you had that supervisor getting on your nerve, you weren't even studying God. You were not even thinking about it. you get you woke up late, you rushed to work, you rush, you just went to your job and you start working, not even a prayer. But when you know Panaya was waiting for you at the job, oh my God, before I even close the door, he come on shut up. Hey, I'm about to obey Jesus. I move every demon out of my way at work. Oh Jesus, touch her right now. Touch him. And you start to pray. You don't even realize you are work. And then you got there early. You stand in the parking lot in the blood. I clean the blood. I clean the blood. I clean the blood. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? And then when you get into the job, you start anointing. Anointing the doors and your desk and everything, the blood and Jesus are coming. Come, are you hearing me? Am I lying? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, Amen. 
Amen, somebody. And now you start seeking God because there's a paniah. It's not just that evil in your marriages. Come on, somebody. But God is trying to push you. He's trying to tell you it's time for a change. When there are changes, guess what? You do everything differently. You pray more than ever. Come on, somebody. You worship more than ever. You see God more than ever. And that's what God is saying today. Are you hearing me? Amen. Yes. Amen. So we're on the same page. So that a penile in your life, don't ask God to rebuke you. Just say, God, help me. I need deliverance. I need to know what you're teaching me. And believe it or not, because I kept on. I did not quit before, but I kept holding on. And the things that I learned on that job, no, it helped me to start a church. It helped me to know about management and how to do everything. Come on, somebody. So God Amen. have a plan. It's time for a change. Are you hearing me? Listen to me. It's time. Trust him. You may not look, it may not look like it right now, but it's time for a change. Are you hearing me today? Amen. How about you when you're pregnant? A pregnant woman, when she's pregnant, there are changes in her body. She had mood swings. Come on. Some of you who have had children, mood swings. Amen. Your feet are swelling, Amen. back pain. You go through so much. I mean, pain everywhere. You can't eat. Sometimes you kept throwing up, but there are changes. Your body is changing. Everything around you is changing. But when that baby come out of you, hallelujah, there's time for joy. You don't care what pain you're in. You saw that little face. Stop crying. Your heart melted. You just want to hold on. You forget about the agony. You forget about what you've been through. You forgot about you almost broke your husband's arms, his hand. You forgot about everything. All you know is there's joy. There's a change. And when the baby comes, guess what? That's a change for life. Your lifestyle is changed. Things that you used to do, you can't do them anymore because now you have a baby. Do you understand? That's what God is saying. Get pregnant today. Are you hearing me? There are changes. Changes that's going on in us. Look what's happening now around the world. We have young people that is marching. They risking their lives. They said, I've been hearing this for the longest. Since I was a baby, I heard what they're doing to our people, what they're doing to this nation. I heard, but now I cannot take it anymore. Do what you will, but I'm going to stand up. Stand up for justice. I am going to stand up if I have to march. Whatever you do to me, take me to jail. I mean, these people are radical. That's what God wants you to do in the Christian world. Be radical for Jesus Christ. That in him I believe. I don't care what you said. I am not going to bow to you, Satan. Because trust and believe. Listen to me. I'm telling you this. There is coming a day. When people, you think this is all about this? It is. But listen, when the nation, they're going to fight against Christianity, Christians. They're going to come against us. But you have to learn to be radical and don't give in. Said, so take me to jail, but I'm not going to stop talking about Jesus Christ. Said, so cut my head off, but I'm not going to stop preaching the word. See, when God Amen. saved you, Amen. he saved you for a purpose. He saved you that you may be able to witness to someone, to build his Amen. kingdom. Come on, somebody. He filled yes. you with the Holy Spirit that you may have power to pray for the people. He said that upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. He yes. said, go yes. into the nation and yes. tell them about the good news. Repent and be baptized. God said, I'm coming back. Go ahead. I'm giving you permission. Go ahead. Change is coming. I'm building you up with wisdom. I build you up with power. Go forth and teach my word. Go forth and witness my word. Tell the nation, get ready. Change is coming. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. 